Today we're starting a series on Trauma in the Twelve Steps. Today we're looking at Trauma in the Twelve Steps, Part 1. My name is Ronald Ovitt, and I'll be your host for this program. As a pastor and recovery coach, having taught on addictions for many years and having, having run recovery homes, I'm convinced that many of the people I've worked with were suffering from childhood trauma and all the emotional ramifications from that. And yet, sadly, not many programs do significant work on that subject. Let's face it, we medicate to regulate our emotions, and yet we don't go after the root of our addictions, those emotional things that bother us. I'm doing this series, Trauma in the Twelve Steps, to help identify some of the issues that we struggle with and hopefully help us in this area of emotional healing. If these videos speak to your heart, I encourage you to check out our Emotional Resilience Living with the Fruit of the Spirit course that will help transform your life and overcome the emotional issues that come with childhood trauma. So let's get into it. Did you have trauma growing up? Many of us did. There are no perfect families. All parents have faults and no child goes through childhood without some trauma. In reviewing the comments that I'm going to give you here in a minute, you may identify some or many of them. All this means is that you have had trauma in your life that is causing you issues today. If so, you may want to seek a counselor and share some of your concerns. The significance of trauma is what it causes us to end up believing about our own self, especially at the time of the trauma. What conclusions did we draw from it? What predictions were made? It is possible that what you are feeling now as volatile emotions are the same ones that you felt when you were a child in trauma. Today, when you, your sensations remind you of a time of trauma in the past, your brain sends out a signal and puts your body on high alert. Your emotions will mimic those of your earlier trauma, and the conclusions and predictions that were set in motion a long time ago will once again be active in your current onslaught of emotion. Of course, in addictions, like I said, we medicate to regulate our emotions. So many of us go through treatment and relapse over and over again because we never deal with the emotional issues that have us bound. Now today, you can start down the road of emotional healing and freedom. So what is trauma? Trauma is an experience or experiences that overwhelm our emotional capacity to handle the situation. This prevents us from acting the way God created us to. You see, stress plus learned helplessness equals trauma. Learned helplessness is the result of feeling there is no use in trying. I'm helpless to do anything about my situation. There is this lack of optimism, confidence, or hope. It affects our feelings of worth, love, safety, and security. Let's look at suffering versus trauma. There's a difference. In suffering, this is how a person with love capacity reacts when a tragedy strikes. They're able to bounce back. They're not destroyed or stuck in emotional turmoil. They suffer by being saddened and they grieve, but they remain intact and are able to eventually return to emotional stability. When a person suffers, they may find their capacities drastically reduced, even to the point of death, but they continue to be themselves with the capacities and dominion they have left. With Jesus, he was an example. With his suffering right to his death, he never lost who he was or what his personal mission was. But in trauma, trauma is different. Trauma is anything that reduces who we are or who we understand ourselves to be. It robs us of love capacity. Love capacity is the ability to know that we are loved and secure no matter what our circumstances uh, that comes our way. Having a loving and nurturing childhood nurtures this. We feel secure and know that our current situation does not define us. With a strong love capacity, we are able to bounce back from painful situations knowing that we are okay. We are resilient. It is our love capacity that helps us overcome traumatic events. A person who has a low love capacity is susceptible to unregulated emotional intensity. They do more than suffer. They remain in trauma and get stuck in their emotional reactions, unable to move on to the next level of maturity. 
Now, many of us do not deal with early childhood trauma because we have it hidden out of our view. It was our normal. So why should we see it as abnormal? It could be that the experience were so, were, were so frightening that we just do not want to go there. Now, perhaps we were left with deep feelings of worthlessness and other painful emotions that are too painful to live with. So we build our life around it, like a person who creates paths through a minefield. The goal of this exercise is to help us understand the type of trauma we may have suffered with. Unresolved trauma can be very troubling, so please proceed as through this video and with this exercise, conscious of your comfort level. If any of the examples I give trouble you, take that as an indicator that you should perhaps see a counselor. The goal here is not to overwhelm you, but rather help you see if there may have been a wounding that needs to be repaired. I was a phobic child. I know fear, and I'm not trying to trick you here or tr trouble you, okay? Again, maybe that you need to see a counselor if that can help you process with this uncomfortable feeling. Remember, you are here now. Take a deep breath, relax, and let yourself return to joy in this present moment, okay? So let's go through some of these. First is type A trauma. This is the trauma resulting from the lack of necessary good things that you should have had. This could be abandonment, rejection, malnutrition, isolation, lack of love, or the absence of encouragement. For example, a child needs to be nurtured and cared for. This gives them a secure attachment. When this does not happen, it is experienced as trauma A. Type A inhibits the development of a love capacity. So I'm going to give you some examples here, and you can think in your mind, rate it one to four. Maybe one is it's never, four is, you know, happened a lot while I was growing up. So ask yourself, when I was growing up, I felt emotionally neglected. People failed to celebrate my birthdays. Christmas was poorly celebrated. One or more of my caregivers were absent. I was left alone to tend on my own. I was left with a caregiver that was emotionally absent. I was left with a caregiver that was drunk, high, or hung over. My family seldom celebrated my extracurricular activities. And then there's physical neglect. Why growing up, there was not enough food in the house for everyone. I was left alone for long periods of time. I had to wear dirty clothes. I was living on the streets by the time I was a teenager or even earlier. I felt unsafe in our home. Now those are all indicators of type A trauma and, and I have this as a printout you can order online here afterwards. Let's look at the B trauma. Type B trauma is not the absence of necessary good things like we just talked about. It is the actual experience of bad things. We experience things that should have never happened. Things like a predominant atmosphere of humiliation or betrayal and contempt can be traumatic. The next level would be constant intimidation, anger, and threats. Finally, there are more extreme cases of abuse, molestation, and violence where there's physical harm. The result of B trauma Traumas are a non-secure attachments. So again, I'm going to read some. Think in your own mind. One, never. Two, seldom. Three, often. Four, very much so. And I'll have this as a printout you can uh, download and go over. But let's listen now. Why growing up, and we're going to talk about physical abuse first. And again, if this makes you uncomfortable, take a deep breath and, you know, write, that, write it down so you can talk to a counselor about it. So let's consider physical abuse. Did people in your home ever hit you so hard that it left bruises or marks? Why growing up, did punishments that you received seem too severe or cruel? Were you poked in the chest, grabbed by the head or hair or shoved? Were you slapped in the face so hard that it left a red mark? Were you spanked so hard that it left welts or bruises? What about emotional abuse? Did people in your family yell and scream at you? Did people in your family say hurtful things to you? Were you threatened with physical punishment? Were you threatened with being sent away? Were you picked on about your appearance? 
Were you teased with a harmful or hurtful nickname? And then there's sexual abuse as a child or adolescent. Did someone ask to touch you inappropriately? Were you touched inappropriately by someone that you knew? Were you attacked or inappropriately touched by someone that you did not know? Were you asked to do inappropriate sexual touching or acts to someone else? Were you asked to be a spectator to sexual behavior? Were you spied upon or purposely watched at while dressing, undressing, or bathing? Finally, there's type C trauma. These are situational traumas that are not inflicted by another person. Sickness, catastrophes, acts of nature, accidents, these cause trauma that need to be dealt with. Ask yourself, did I experience prolonged sickness in childhood? Did I experience childhood hospitalization? Did I or someone close to me experience a traumatic natural disaster? Did I experience the death, severe accident, or sickness of someone close to me? Of course, the severity of the results from having either type A, B, or C trauma depends on your age, the severity of the trauma, the existing love capacity you have, and the strength of the attachments that you already had. Negative results of these traumas can be relational pain, pervasive fear, stuck in painful emotions, immaturity, highly sensitive toward various sensations that remind you of the trauma, negative and immature beliefs about ourself and life in general. So make a mental note of a specific childhood trauma that I mentioned that was disconcerting to you. And if it bothers you, again, I would recommend that you process it with someone you trust or a professional counselor. We get so concerned about treating our addiction that we neglect to treat one of the main causes of addictions. We medicate to regulate our emotions. But know this, my friend, today there is hope. You can live in freedom from the past. You can. Your past does not have to define you. Make sure that you come back for trauma in the 12 Steps Part 2. Again, you can go to uh, this YouTube page and download uh, this sheet of paper where you can fill it out, or you can go to our website, www.empowerforliving.com, under resources. Thank you.